And he said unto them, this is the risen Christ, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's rebuking them and then he's calling them. Somebody say he has to get rid of the unbelief. About like the preacher that came to a friend of mine. He's been in heaven a long time. It's, and this man was a lot older. He's probably 30 years older than me. Years ago when I was in my mid-20s, he, he was connected to our ministry and went around with us. He was also called to preach. But, but he's about to have open heart surgery and his local pastor come in to pray with him before he was going to have open heart surgery. The pastor comes in and says, well, brother so-and-so, we've come to pray for you. And he said, oh, I just want you to know, you know, God's in control. But don't get your hopes up. You know, God may, he may be calling you home. You don't need to get your hopes up. And they're fitting to roll him now back there and they're going to pull his chest apart, you know. And he, he told the nurses there, by the way, he, he told me this story after because he recovered. He, he lived a while after that. He, he said, oh, wait a minute. He said, my pastor needs prayer. He said, what? He said, yeah, he come to pray. He said, well, pastor, come here. He said, I don't need you praying for me. I, he said, God sent you here for me to pray for you. He said, because you need hope. You need faith again. And he grabbed hold of his pastor before they took him in the back to put him under and, and open his chest. And do it. He said, I pray God my pastor starts believing again. Amen. Who wants preacher to come? If he ain't preaching to me to believe. If he ain't praying in faith, Lord, don't do me no favors. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Prayer of faith to save the sick. Prayer of doubt may make them sicker. Stay away from me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Don't just let anybody pray for you. These people get on social media with you. Please pray. No, no. That's why I don't like my name floated around too much. But I, don't, I don't know who I want to speak with. Come on. Amen. I want people to believe. Amen. Because you can say you believe, but that don't mean you believe. Just proving it right here. And so he said, he that believeth and is baptized should be saved, and he that believeth not should be damned. Jesus let them know right there, everybody you preach to ain't going to believe. Everybody you tell my, that, but that don't mean don't preach. You got to still go preach. Sarah Aaron knocks it out of the world. Let's go and save the whole world. You ain't going to save the whole world. First of all, you ain't going to save one person. Only he can save. Our job ain't to save nobody. It's just to preach. The believing's left up to the individual, whether they're going to believe or not. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't make nobody believe nothing, but he, I am called, I'm going to preach. Huh? Verse 17, and he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Some of them say there's some signs, some miracles, some indicators that these people really believe. When you preach, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name, some of them say, Jesus, shall they cast out devils. Cast out literally means evict out. Jesus preached in their synagogues and cast out devils. Amen. Mark 1, 39. Some demons you preach out. I've had the demon possessed, and y'all have heard these stories. Tell me, they say, I hate your preaching. I said, thank you, devil, for the compliment. And I said, come out in Jesus' name. I've had them say, I hate you. And I say back, devil, I hate you too. Come out in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Jesus would cast demons out. Somebody say, now he's telling those, this is the risen Christ, the one raised from the dead. Who's preaching this anymore? We're hearing it right here this morning. This is what he said, amen, just a few hours after he was raised from the dead. He said, those that believe, believe what? The message, I'm alive. That really believe I'm raised from the dead. Don't just believe with the mouth, oh, I believe. No, I'm talking about believe. They really believe. Somebody say at the top of the list, one of the signs, he said they're going to cast out devils. Somebody shout, they're going to have authority over demons. Amen. Oh, Brother Martin, the devil is telling me the devil. My God, you, you unbelieving believer. Somebody shout if you was a believing believer. Come on, somebody. You'd take authority over that devil. My God ain't dead. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? So when demons show up, I take authority in the name of Jesus because I don't just believe. I think I believe. Maybe he might be alive. No, I know he lives. He's alive. I believe it with everything in me. That's why I talk to them devils like dogs and tell them come out in the name of Jesus. 
had the demon possessed manifest witches and you name it amen and try to take over service while I'm preaching I don't allow that to go on I stop that I take authority in that amen that devil's going to shut up it's going to get cast out or it's going to be run out one amen but the word of God's going to be preached anybody here Holy Ghost why he's alive sister Janice I ain't here preaching about a dead God he's alive he's alive so somebody shout we got authority over every demon every unclean spirit all right check this out it said and those that believe he said in my name he said they'll cast out devils it said they'll speak with new tongues somebody said they'll speak with new tongues new means a fresh it means a new kind but it really translates an unheard of tongue don't just mean your six ounce piece of meat between your top and bottom jaw hey, tongue literally means language somebody said they're going to speak with a new language Somebody say an unknown, an unheard of language. Now listen, in the same narrative of what Mark's saying in Mark 16, when you look back in Acts 1 where we preach from Thursday night, amen, and if you're not going back listening when you miss a service, you're missing words from God and your faith is deteriorating, amen, because you're not following along and it's so easy to do it. And don't tell me you ain't got time to do it because everybody's on their phone. <laughs> ain't nobody not on their phone, all right? In Acts 1, the whole time Jesus is right here starting this message off with them, he's preaching to them about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is what the resurrected Christ is preaching to them. And so in Acts 1, amen, which comes right before Acts 2, this is what's happening. So Jesus is prophesying to them. The resurrected Christ is preaching to them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 4 and said when they were filled with the Spirit, somebody said they spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. They spake with a new tongue. Here it is, the resurrected Christ, amen, just raised himself from the dead after Passover because he is Passover that was sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, and he's about to tell them, about a 50, a penty, 50 days later, 50, penty, Pentecost. Come on, somebody. When he was going to birth his church and pour out his Holy Ghost. He's letting them know, hey man, when you get full of this Holy Ghost promise, hey man, this is the resurrected Christ preaching. He said, you're going to cast devils out. He said, you're going to speak with new tongues. Somebody shout, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you will speak with a fresh tongue, an unknown tongue, an unheard of tongue. Somebody say a language that's different That is heavily from another world Oh hallelujah Anybody hear the Holy Ghost Amen And listen what he goes on and says He said And they shall take up serpents Now I just won't explain this to you I remember years ago I was in a revival in Albany, Georgia We was there a few weeks And one of the services Back then people We didn't do too many videos We did a few But somebody took a picture of me Holding a staff like this but it was one of them old naughty twisted kind and really in the picture it looked just like a serpent i mean look if you looked at it from this, man it got being spread all over facebook brother marvin's handling serpents he's he's take, taking up snakes if y'all remember in 2019 summer 2019 i had a whole group of snake loving satanists nationwide. They attacked me all over social media, trying to slander my name, saying I was all this, a child abuser, all kind of crazy stuff. For three days around the clock, I had to go and sift through my website, through my social media, and finally I just started asking saints to join in with me and bind, and you know in 24 hours all that Satanism stopped. But they were attacking me because I'd made a video of my tire going near a, a, a snake, and I was preaching, you know, about the old serpent and just a short little video they hated my nuts because they thought I may have brought harm to a snake well I'll go ahead and tell you something this is still America this ain't China Hello, some want it to be but people say what kind of snake is it if it gets too close to me a dead one A few weeks ago, and this could have been a few days ago too, it was so cold. And it done warmed up in the 80s two or three days prior to that. And then it's back down in the 30s and 20s. Amen? Kind of like church members. You don't know whether they're going to be cold or hot. And uh, I'm out there moving an old doorstep that had rotten down and burled down in the hole. I could tell by the snake's body. It was cold up. I knew it was a moxie. I didn't say, hey, let me see if I can... 
transplant the snake to a safer place of habitation. I thought, buddy, you too close to my house. And a few temperatures warmer, you, you reptile, you be, you'd have been right there up under my feet. Amen. What'd you do? I went and got my 410 and I put him out of this world. Come on. Amen. Brother, you shouldn't have did that. You do what you want to with snakes at your house that's poisonous and at my house they die. I said all that to say this. And this is this. And this is that. <laughs> Somebody bring me a snake in here. You see this stick? I don't care if it's green, black. I don't care if it's got all the beautiful yelling red colors. I don't care what color it is. I don't care what designs is on it. I'm going to beat it to death. And you better let it go or I'll beat your hands off. <laughs> hey, Amen. Come on. That's for you spider lovers too. Don't you bring one around me, son. It's gone. <laughs> if it's a roach, Brother Tyler will get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. There have been times I've been preaching to that. <laughs> Except for that one time I went... <gasps> suck something. I don't know what that bug was. Mm, that was awful. That was under my tent years ago. Got a lot of protein at that meeting. <laughs> I didn't have on camel's hair, but I think I was eating locusts. I needed to chase it with honey, though. There weren't no honey around. <laughs> oh, Lord, ain't you glad you're laughing since it's so late? Wait, I'm about to get through. So serpents here, people are like, oh, Jesus said we're going, the risen Christ is now preaching to us, we're going to take up serpents. I go to Paul in Acts 28. Paul weren't taking up serpents like we think this means. He was gathering a bundle of sticks to put it on the fire after the shipwreck. He didn't know that viper was in them sticks. And when he got close to the fire, the fire burned on that snake, and that snake come out of the sticks thinking Paul was the one burning him. And that thing latched onto him. You studied the viper there. It, when it talks about it latched onto him, that's a, that's a, a, a cobra because they chew. They don't just bite and inject and let go. They'll chew on you. And so that's what he had. But then Paul done what any man of God. I'm going to be like Paul. Paul didn't say, hey, look at this snake. Most deadly snake in the world. Whoopee. He weren't handling the snake. The snake was handling him. But Paul knew how to handle it. Fire! Snake! Snake shish kebab. That old chewing cobra opened its mouth real quick. Why? Because the fire on its behind. I'm still going to have me a picture painted of that. The fire on the tail of that snake. Uh, and he shook the beast off in the fire and he felt no harm. Now that means the poison didn't kill him. That goes on the next thing, say if they drink any deadly thing, it'll harm them. It says if they drink it. Oh, I got faith in God. I believe he's alive. Bring me that bottle of strychnine. What's that? No, that ain't faith. That's, that's dummy. That's the spirit of stupid. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that's dumb. That's tempting God. Amen. If they drank any death. That means without their knowledge, they didn't know it. Somebody tried to kill them. There's a lot of that went on back then. Amen. It pausing what they were drinking or anything, especially the kings, anybody. Amen. The public, if they wanted to shut you up, amen, they'd try to pause it. Uh, now, let me get back to the taking up of the serpents because I know people they get all this confused. I'm going to tell you what this sign is. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about believing he lives and the authority it brings, amen, and, and how Jesus had to deal with these unbelieving believers after his resurrection, and he's still having to do it today. How do we know? Because these signs, what are they missing? What, what's, what's, what's happening? It says right here, you'll take up serpents. Now, the word take up literally means to take away. Literally, when you study the word take up, it means to raise up. It means to raise up your voice over. So we're talking about spiritual things here. We're talking about a God that's setting up his kingdom that's going to come by faith, a word of faith, not by your sight, not by what you see, but a word, a message. 
So he's talking about, and when you study serpents here and you look at the serpent, you find in Revelation 20 verses 2 where it talks about that old dragon, that dragon, the old serpent, the devil, even Satan. It's going to be bound for a thousand years in Revelation 20 verse 2. When you study the word serpent there, you're, you're dealing with doctrines of demons. In Matthew 23 verses 33, what did Jesus call the Pharisees and their doctrine? Somebody shout, he called them a generation of vipers. He called them serpents. Somebody say Jesus called the men, the false teachers and the preachers, he called them serpents. He called them a generation of vipers. Amen. So when we're talking about taking up serpents here, we're not just talking, we're not talking about with a hand. He's going to mention what the hand's going to do in a minute, and that's concerning laying it on the sick. He ain't talking about grabbing snakes. He's talking about the preacher's going to come that believes that Jesus lives, and he's going to preach this word of faith. And it's going to contradict that old serpent, that one that showed himself to Eve in the garden as the serpent, the one that beguiled Eve. Amen. And Paul warns in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 that would beguile even people in the church and preach to them another Jesus, that old serpent. So he's talking about doctrines of demons. Right here he said, if you really believe and believe that I'm alive and you follow me, I'll give you authority to raise up your voice and to evict, amen, and take up or take out the doctrines of the serpent. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody ever heard that? Just did. You want me to say it again? Somebody asked you. All right. And he said, now he's going to tell you what they'll do with their hand. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Somebody say lay hands. Lay hands literally means to impose. To lay hands. It's talking about authority. It's not talking about it. Isn't it? And don't worry, we ain't going to lay hands on people this morning. Just slam me to the... But it, it, it's showing an aggressive laying on of hands. Somebody that's in authority. Why? All based on he's risen. Not an unbelieving believer, but a believer. There's a lot of folks that pray for people that are sick. About, they don't really believe. They don't. They don't believe he's alive. Amen. They, they don't. They don't really believe. And I'll, I'll show you some ways and why here in just a moment. But he said they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Recovery just means they'll begin to amend. From that point, they'll start getting better. Don't always mean quickly, but from that moment they'll recover. All right? Lay, impose. That means. Lay hands. Now, if in Proverbs 18 and 21 said death and life is in the power of the tongue. Remember that? The word tongue in Hebrew is hand. The word hand here means power. Some ought to say the power of the tongue. Some ought to say the power of the hand. The tongue and the hand, same thing. When God said they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, he's not just talking about with their hand. So, to impose. So I'm not forcefully laying my hand, but when I lay with my hand, my tongue is my hand, scripturally. Come on, you follow me in Hebrew? Amen? Praise God. I ain't geek. I mean Greek, but but you are meek. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So the hand of the tongue, the power of the tongue. Somebody say hand and power, same thing. And it all goes back to the tongue. So when I lay my hands, I don't just lay my hands, but I know what to say with my mouth. And that's where I impose. That's why the Bible talks about the prayer of faith to save the sick in James 5, 15. And he says, let the elders. The elders are those, don't necessarily just mean those that are older. But it means those that are trained and skilled in the word of faith. That means they know how to pray the scriptures. And it says, let them pray over them. Not just pray for them. Some might say pray over them. When you pray for the sick, you got to know what the word says. You pray over that person. You lay hands, yeah, gently. But then you impose with force with your hand, the power of your hand, your tongue. And you say what God's word says. And you don't just pray for them. You announce over them. You pray over them what God's word says. For example, by his stripes ye were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. Because somebody say the prayer of faith is preaching the faith. It's saying the faith. 
So praying ain't just praying, it's saying. When you, 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 and he was saying this, those that believe in my name, these signs will follow them. They'll not just lay hands on the sick, but they'll say something with their mouth. The hand, the power. Come on, somebody. Amen. The hand represents they'll lay power on the sick. Somebody say they'll lay power, the hand. And we know Hebrew, amen, the hand is the tongue, the power of the hand, the tongue. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout, so when they lay hands, they're not just laying hands. They lay their tongue. I ain't talking about going up and licking somebody, but I'm talking about licking that in the name of Jesus. When you say the scriptures, you pray it in faith. Why? He said, these signs will follow them that believe I live. I'm raised from the dead. Somebody say, it's time for some signs. And so after this, he had spoken unto them. He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Y'all like Mark as a pastor. It didn't take him long to tell you. He left out a lot of stuff, but he just gets straight to it. Unlike John, John was probably one of the long-winded ones. Amen. Somebody's thinking, yeah, we call you John now. Amen. That's why we had to take so many breaks to the John. <laughs> but I, and it says, verse 20, and they went forth. Somebody shout until these unbelieving believers begin to believe. Not by what they see, but by what he said. They couldn't go forth. No wonder many can't go no forward. They can't go no further, rather. They can't go forward. They can't go no further. Amen. Because there's too many unbelieving believers after his resurrection. Oh, I believe, Brother Marvin. Really? If it ain't affecting your lifestyle, it ain't affecting the way you live, it ain't affecting the way you pray, if it ain't affecting how you believe, come on. There are people look at you and say they believe Jesus is alive, but they don't believe God will heal you. They don't believe in anything as far as the miraculous he can do. Come on, somebody. Outside of their little religious blocks, but, but, but boy, we believe he's alive. And they went forth and somebody said they preached everywhere. Mm -hmm. The Lord working with them. I thought he was gone. He was. This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is after the churches. See, Mark just cut. He cut all. He's cut to the. They done been filled with the Holy Ghost now. That's how the Lord was working with them. The Holy Ghost was in them. Somebody say, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne. Boy, I try to envision this scripture every time I preach. Lord, I'm going to preach your word. And no matter who's with me or who's against me, the Lord's going to be with me. Wow, somebody say, when the preaching starts, Jesus shows up. Mm. Woo. Those that believe that will show up when the preaching starts. <laughs> all right, all right. It said, and the Lord was working with them. Here they are co laboring. Here it is, confirming the word. With signs following, amen. What signs? These signs he just said. So wherever they went, somebody say, they were casting devils out. You heard them speaking with new tongues. Amen. They were opposing and contradicting and taking up and taking out these serpents, these doctrines of devils. Come on, these religious serpents. Amen. Praise God. And, 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 and they were experiencing divine protection. I'm talking about divine protection from poisons and deadly things. Amen. And somebody say, last but not least, they laid hands, but they spoke with authority, with the power of the tongue, the hand, because it's the same word. And they commanded the sicknesses to go, and somebody say, people begin to recover. They begin to amend. So the resurrected Christ told his church, Here's the condition you got to believe.